Welcome to this edition of Premiere Pro Quick Tips, where you can learn to become a more creative video editor. In this edition, you'll learn that a perfectly smooth green screen is not necessarily required anymore. You've often heard that a green screen has to be perfectly green, it has to be smooth, no wrinkles, and evenly and well lit. Well, it's not necessarily the case. For instance, look at this background. See these wrinkles here? There's like hard creases, three of those. Got a hard crease right through here, wrinkles throughout. If you notice, it's much lighter over here than down in here. So let me show you how Premiere Pro can handle something like this. Within Premiere Pro, to remove the green screen, you will go here to the effects list and type in Ultra Key. Actually, it's two words, Ultra Key. And here it is under Video Effects, Keying, and Ultra Key. We take the Ultra Key, drag it to the clip, and now we go to the Effects Controls so we can manipulate the Ultra Key. First thing you want to do is get your eyedropper here on the Key Color property. And you want to sample a color close to the edge of the subject in the darkest part that you can find. So something down in here. Okay. So that's selected. Now, if you did have a perfect, evenly lit, smooth green screen, Technically, this was all. This would be all you have to do is, is select the color, and it removes it all and turns it all to black. Black is your indication that the all the green is gone. But in this case, as I mentioned, we have some wrinkles and uneven lighting. What I like to do next is to switch from composite view to the alpha channel view, which basically goes from to black and white. Uh, what we want to preserve is all going to be in white and what we want to cut out should all be black. So our goal is to have this whole background solid black. The next step is I go into an aggressive mode. That pulls in a little bit more of the green. So as you can see, the background has gotten more black, which means more of the green is being chroma keyed out. We need to tweak this a little bit further. So let's open the matte generation set of properties. And what I usually go for first is the highlight setting. So we take this highlight setting and we bring it down. You don't want to go all the way at, at once. Bring it down until everything basically turns black. And in my case, it's all the way down to a one. And most of the time, to be honest, it with this particular background and your background and lighting could make this value different than mine, but uh, I brought all the highlights down to zero. So you notice this, the whole black is what's going to be cut out. White is what's going to be preserved. So we have a pretty good solid black background here. So let's turn off this alpha channel and go back to the composite. And now you see the subject and the background is completely cut out. So now we're ready to replace the background with whatever we, we like. So let's do that. Let's go in the graphics. Let me find a good background. Uh, in fact, let me go back to the media browser. Let's go to graphics. I believe let's, let's bring this in and I'll put this down on the timeline. What I have to do here since the timeline and sequence are displayed in, in layers. Each one of these tracks is considered a layer. If you're familiar with Photoshop, layers on top take precedence over the layers on the bottom as far as visibility 
and effects. So we want the this image that I just brought down, let me stretch it out to the length of the video. I want that to be behind the subject. So this the subject should be above the image on the timeline. And then let me stretch this, uh, scale it to frame size. And then I want to actually scale it just a bit more to fill in. Let's play this. By down, the video displayed on that LCD, on that display. And now we have a background. One more extra tip that I guess I wasn't planning on doing, but uh, what, I, what I like to do with that background photo is apply an effect called the Gaussian Blur. So under Video Effects, Blur and Sharp, and Gaussian Blur, I'll just apply that to the, to the, foot, the background and give it a little bit of a blur there. So that gives a little bokeh effect uh, if you're familiar with that effect in photography where the background's out of focus. Okay, so at this point we have a we have a background. Instead of a photo as the background, you could actually have another video playing in the background. Say a background of you know people walking down the sidewalk or uh, the beach and the waves breaking, things like that. So the the possibilities are endless as they say. So that's it. As you saw, a perfectly smooth, wrinkle-free, evenly lit green screen is not necessarily required for your video work. I'm curious to hear all your stories about your particular green screen experiences. Do you have wrinkled green screens? Do you have evenly lit green screens? Do you use blue screens? Let me know about it in the comments down below. If you like this quick tip, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to be notified of any other new tips that I publish, please click on the subscribe button somewhere on this page. Thank you for watching and thank you in advance for subscribing. Until next time, be creative.